Hey, what's happening? You're no. not in church? What? You're not in church? No, uh, oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Not me, man. You won't catch me in that uh, I you were staying energy. up. Huh? I thought you were staying up late to hear the Pope's message. Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> not me, man. I'll catch it tomorrow on... Uh... <laughs> Yeah. Hello? Hello? Catch Hello. that and H1N1. I, I, I'm using it. Using the phone. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. What'd you say? I said uh, you'll catch that tomorrow along with H1N1. H1N1? What's that? Hannah. Hannah. Pig flu. Pig flu? I never heard of that. You haven't heard of pig flu? Pig flu, I, I, I no. I'm <laughs> what is that? That's what they call H one N one. H one N one. What is that? Like it sounds like a, a bill or something they would pass in Congress. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. They oh. they've got half the world worried they're gonna die tomorrow from <laughs> pig flu. Oh, that's the new one they're talking about? Yeah. Uh Okay. Well, new. It's been around now for about six months or something. <laughs> oh, because it was called swine flu tonight. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, um... They just added the wine uh, at the beginning, and then when the drunks caught it, then they became H1N1. <laughs> Short for Henny. Henny. Henny or Hemi. Or uh, an improvement on the power of the motor. Or Hannah, what was her name, Rothschild. Um, I don't know. In any event, you're not listening to the Pope's message. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know you are. Probably, you probably get some uh, head of message. Awesome. Well, from from what I heard, mm-hmm. he's not feeling well. Oh. So he's got to get a good night's sleep, and he's not going to give a message. <laughs> so he had his midnight mass at ten o'clock instead, and went to bed. <laughs> oh, uh. But what can you expect from a German pope who's got all the connections? Yeah, he seems it seems kind of like open though, like um, like he was openly what uh, a, a Hitler youth, uh, and yeah, he was all kinds of things, <laughs> all types of societies, right? Yeah. Uh, so when they join, those people join societies. They just they just stay with one, or they move in different ones. You, you know? don't have to join a society to be a member of the society. Really. You only have to act like they do. Oh. So oh. that way you maintain your denial. Mm. You can say, no, I never joined any secret society. <laughs> denial is not just the river in Egypt. Yeah. And there's and there's a reason why um, they call them like banks and... I know that's related to the banks, you know, the, the water. Yeah. I know that's I I forgot exactly what it meant, but it's well, related that, to. Um, that's what banks do: is they they provide a pathway mm-hmm. for the flow of uh, what is needed to generate life at the other end. Mm-hmm. In nature, it's water. But in the system, it's money. Yeah, what's the um, uh, significance of gulf? Because you, you, I've seen you mention that as like a, a word. Guelph. Well, uh, oh, it's it symbolizes that thing. Or? You ever heard of an elf? <laughs> <laughs> a little helper. Yeah. <laughs> Little helper for Santa Claus and Satan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've always wondered like uh why elf and elves they always sound to selves and 
myself or something. So. And since E and A Alf. Remember Alf? are interchangeable, what's it all about, Alfie? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, that was a look. I was a young kid. That's still yeah. on TV. <laughs> um, having mm-hmm. is having, cutting in two, having, but if you're calving, you're giving birth to, and uh, that's how a calf is born, but it's also how an iceberg is born. Yeah, I've seen the iceberg, um, like, it's actually bigger on the bottom. Like yeah. there's, there's actually one that's really known. I forgot the exact name of the really popular one. But it's actually, like, bigger on the bottom than on the top. And they break off because of, um... Global warming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I was reading something on, um, snow. Snowflake, you know. It's interesting. What happened? News, that's the word. Yeah. News. <laughs> yeah, and, and, um, but in the snowflake, it's interesting that they have, like, they class them into, like, six different types, classes, and how they are shaped is, it I, it sounds familiar, they look familiar, mm-hmm. like, <laughs> like somebody else copied that and used that mm-hmm. system, so, I thought it was interesting, so I, I see what, um, they get that idea. Snow news and swan. Yeah. All the same word. And winds. All have the same purpose. Oh. oh. Wind too. That's pretty uh, interesting. Oh. Yeah, I watched a movie today called Cave, right? And they go yeah. in this cave. They go into these cave, and it, it's pretty. I don't know, like um. They they discover these caves and and this it's just this tunnel network that just goes from like the Carpathian Mountains all the way to Mexico. Mhm. And I'm just like, wow, man, they got networks under there. They could just. <laughs> I got a picture on my world map from the National Geographic Society right beside me, and it shows the highway underground. How, what do you, what did you like this? It goes everywhere. Oh, uh, but I, I I'm guessing a so, because how they shoot these movies, they show these movies in in these caves. I'm guessing these are caves that have been abandoned and and left. Yeah, each each cave mm-hmm. provides a possibility of uh, collapse. Mm. Mm. And when it collapses, well, everything on top comes. What's on top goes down. Yeah, yeah. And it, they show like you know, it was like uh, like these little creatures that lived on the ground. And I'm guessing like, cause I I, you know, I know there's some other creatures that maybe came from the surface at one time and evolved differently below ground, and. I'm 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 sure like this is where uh you know religion probably got ideas of you know little demons and <laughs> creatures. It's probably creatures from underground that they you know secret societies people probably will study and or whatever. Well, the 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 conditions on the surface mm-hmm. would in fact cause people to take refuge underground in the appropriate times. So what are the appropriate times? If if you're uh, in the path of uh, floods, mm-hmm. it may not be a great thing to run underground because water might run into it and yeah. fill it up. But if uh, you're at a time of uh, cold, mm-hmm. a lot of snow, or if you had a time of the opposite, a lot of heat. The uh, the advantage of being underground is the temperature is constant. 
What's the temperature like, you think? Uh, In the 60s. Right. And uh, the temperature rises by one degree. I forget now, for every 100, 100 something or other. I don't remember if it was miles or um, or something else, kilometers, as you approach the center. But close to the, the surface, it's, it's in the 65, I think, to 68 range, somewhere in there. I, do you think, um, I think it would be hard from, for uh, whatever type of animal to actually try to live on the surface again after living down there for so long? Well, it all depends what they feed on. And uh, you got to remember if they're feeding on something that needs to eat something <laughs> that comes from the surface, then they have to travel back and forth. They don't get the feed for the animal. Mm. But the, the traditional method, uh, I would suspect, is uh, you live underground, but you journey uh, for the purpose of finding food to the surface. So you think like underground, like right now, like you have marshy, wet areas all over the place, but... Do you think in like other places it's probably like luxury five star hotels? Well, I, I would I would think that uh, if uh, if a mainstay of the diet was milk, mm -hmm. then some animal that produces milk has to be there with them. And what would that be? Sea cow mm. might might fit the bill, you know. That type of animal. That uh, that lives in water. Uh, it probably travels through a network of tunnels to the surface, back and forth, that kind of stuff. Or or it could be kept in in some kind of corral where they've entered into a pool. Mm -hmm. And and uh, the exit is closed off. All depends on what they eat. Everybody is just a product of their food. Yeah. But our food is um <laughs> tampered with so much. Yeah. Well, they don't have Costco underground <laughs> as part of the normal development. You know. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but uh, Beowulf or Beowulf, as some people pronounce it, mm -hmm. uh, was was basically a kind of a sea cow, and, mm -hmm. and I guess that's uh, linked to the whale. Mm -hmm. And the whale is, of course, important because that's the name of the Queen of England. Yeah family, and it's the end of the word Jeruz. <laughs> Jeruz. Jeruz. Jeruz Alem. Whale. J-E, isn't that like something else in French? Je. Je. Moi. Moi. Je. The. I. I will. Oh. oh I thought it meant the, because that would make Jerusalem the male ruse, right? I or one oh. ruse. The ruse of one because number two is number one, so you gotta put the ruse up first. Ruse one hmm. whale male alam. Hmm. Alam was the capital of Medi for a while. Media. What would you do, Glenn, if uh Chuck would die Neanderthal or to say? Uh, came <laughs> came on your on your property. <laughs> well, I expect they will. That's why I'm here. 
That's why I, mm-hmm. I need to dig down two shafts mm-hmm. and and build the structure around those shafts that that would allow for a um, a meeting at one stage of the game before the whole world is destroyed. Um, what's it called when? That's uh, that's like thirty miles. Isn't it to get down there? It all depends on where you are on the surface of the earth. Yeah. To get to the Moho discontinuity can be as little as three miles below the surface if the surface is the ocean. And I'm not talking the top of the ocean, I'm talking the bottom of the ocean, three miles down. But the Moho discontinuity itself is about 30 miles in depth from that point. Mm -hmm. So you only need uh, to go down three miles, and I don't expect that we need to go down three miles. Mm -hmm. I think that here the um, uh, Canadian Shield is their roof. Certainly, how it's discussed in mythology. So, if uh, if you're in the Moho discontinuity and you're at a place where they've built a, a city-type structure, mm-hmm. and you look up, uh, what you would be seeing would be the underneath side of the Canadian Shield in mm-hmm. this area. So our task is basically just to provide access uh, below surface possibilities. And here um, the structure of the geology is that we have 23 feet of surface material followed by a 100-foot thickness of rock which may, in fact, be like a 10-story building. Uh, And then that leaves approximately 880 feet down to the Moho discontinuity. So my suggestion is that if we go down to the level of the building, Mm -hmm. that would be the equivalent of 12 stories. And then we double the shaft in depth from that point. So we go to 24 stories. And we're then in the middle of that eight, or in, in part of that 880 uh, foot of material leading to the Canadian Shield, um, so leaving approximately 750 feet and you leave it up to them to make their way up to there. Hmm. And then they take the elevator from there. I wonder how they would react. they just like, wow, one of, one of the slaves. Uh, one like, of our original uh, helpers uh-huh. is, uh, is now working for creation. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. But they don't, uh, I don't know, how, how, what do you think their uh, uh, view towards creation is? Well, they're hijackers of creation. I mean, all you have to do is you speak to architects and engineers mm-hmm. and you listen to their mentality and they talk about what they created out of the laboratory or the drawing board or uh, scientific uh, background, but Mm -hmm. they don't give much credit to the fact that what they do is just basically shuffle stuff around, reassemble in a, a different way what creation that I suspect knows a little more than they do. Uh, had set up in the first place. 
did creation intend for them to do that? I suspect that it's a learning possibility, and therefore, when it happens, you have a choice of shutting it down immediately or letting it go. And uh, in that case, they, they chose to let it go and see what would happen. Would people, in fact, be um, smart enough, tough enough, to, to turn down bribes under very trying conditions mm-hmm. a lot of the times? Or would they they fall for the trap? You've only been, you've only people have only tried to bribe you only once? Was it once or many times? Nobody tried to bribe me. Because he said it was the prime minister's uh, cabinet that wanted to... Asked me for a bribe. Wanted me to pay them, not them pay me. Oh, yeah. 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 Nobody has ever offered me any money to do anything that I wouldn't do because I wouldn't do it. <laughs> actually, actually, no. That one time though, with the um, some people uh, in eight in uh, I think it was uh, Japan who asked for rights to your DNA, wanted you to sign over your rights, and they would pay you. That's yeah. that's sort of like a bribe. Well, what they were in fact asking for is that. I sell the farm Mm -hmm. and build the project that I want to build um, five years after I had completed my excavations. And um, that's still a a possibility. That's not bribing me. That's what I'm here to do. Yeah, but they wanted you to give you... In return for the money at the end, they threw in a clause that uh, a part of the deal, to close the deal, would I would sign over the rights to my DNA. Then that basically changed the direction in which we were going, and I turned it down, and uh, I was that it was probably just a test to to see how I would react. But whether it was a test or not, they got the direct answer. That's not going to happen. <laughs> I, think, I think about, like, <laughs> it's happening to me. They're just people approaching me and say, hey, by the way, uh, could you uh, sell us your soul? Like... <laughs> Well, they they don't normally put it that plainly. Yeah. They they normally say, um, "How would you like to be a millionaire?" <laughs> yeah. How um, would you like to be a billionaire? Mm-hmm. How would you like to be called Bill Gates? You know, or Albert Einstein. You know, some people are not interested in money; they're just interested in fame. Your glory or whatever. Oh you man, know. um, I think about. I kind of. Feel, I feel bad for like when I look at these people, like I don't know, like actors and these people who are put in front of us. Like a lot of them are so uh, robotically controlled. I think, man, just through like their DNA, and mm-hmm. I'm just like, damn, man. People don't look at it like that, but. See, I, I'm starting to see it like that. Because, and then they're given like a relig- like when you see the religion that they're controlled with. Like, pretty, pretty a lot old. of people um, haven't had an opportunity to follow the story 
And their problem is they can't put offers that are made to them in context. They only put it in the context of their own reasoning, and they don't know anything about the bigger story. The reason for that is they don't really have access to their own intuition. Yeah. So it's... it's uh, you can't blame a robot for being a robot, no. but you can blame a robot for remaining a robot if they have evidence beyond um, any uh, doubt whatsoever <laughs> that they are being used as a robot when they were supposed to be individual persons with a free mind, they, uh, they continue to act as a robot. That is where the problem lies. Yeah. Those who have no knowledge basically stuck until they open up the pathways to their intuition. Yeah. Everybody has the information in their DNA. Mm -hmm. And it's a matter of going to the right place and, and making a withdrawal and dissecting that that knowledge. Because mm -hmm. what we have in our head as reasoning is basically information. Mm -hmm. What you have in your spine as intuition is knowledge. Things that were true happen and are are behind us are not happening. That's knowledge. The two combined, knowledge and information combined, makes wisdom. I have to use their language and their words, but the word wisdom, like every word, has more than one meaning. And it always depends on which meaning you're referring to. The wiz could be Sima. <laughs> yeah. And, and it could and, be uh, Miz. And it could be Wizard. Mm -hmm. And it certainly, Dome relates back to Medi, mm. Media players, uh, so it all depends on what you mean by the word when you're saying it, but every judge will interpret it in whatever way the judge decides is appropriate for his programming. And the judge is kind of symbolic of uh, your own... Your own, yourself. Yeah. <laughs> You're the judge. You're the judge of your own wisdom. But if you don't have access to your knowledge base, which is your intuition, then you can never arrive at the right decision. Reasoning only uh, is... is um, like a drunk in a tavern who thinks he knows it all. <laughs> and try to convince a person who's drunk that he's drunk. And and you'll find that that's almost an impossible task. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like... Uh... <laughs> People sure. have to kind of happen on it and the circumstances of the day have to be such that they start pondering on on that what appears to be significant knowledge that is coming to them or they they simply brush it aside and say you know if I agree to this, then I'm going to be responsible for something or other, and I don't want any responsibility. 
You know what gets me about people, man? How um they try to um people will try to impose their view on you like I'll have a conversation with people and they'll be like No, this is a fact. Yeah. And I'm like, Oh, it's just your point of view, I you know, I disagree. No, that's fact. That's <laughs> fact. Yeah. And that's how it is, man. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. I believe in freedom of thought as long <laughs> as you think the way I do. <laughs> yeah. I think that's the only, like, um, true freedom, I guess, uh, like, we can have. You know, cause You're in charge of one thing. Your you. own mind. Your you. own destiny. Your own... And when you let someone else make all your decisions for you mm-hmm. without ever observing, analyzing, and concluding on your own, mm-hmm. uh, you're, in fact, a slave. You're, you're giving away your only property, which is a single unit mm-hmm. of political decision-making, how you are going to be viewed and act in society is up to you. And, and if to be viewed in society as somebody to be respected because you're accepting stuff that's stupid, that's your choice. Yeah. When somebody comes to me and says, uh, a man died for you on the cross 2,000 years ago, and therefore you should base your entire life on the teachings of this person. Mm-hmm. I say... Uh, Mon oeil in French, my eye in English, and in the colloquial, up yours. (laughs) (laughs) Imagine if somebody said to you, there's a guy that lives down the block. He's going to the electric chair. He died for you. Oh, I have people tell me this all the time. I have an old guy, older guy, tell me, "Oh, uh, he's like, you know, he's knocking at your door. He's gonna come knocking at your door. Watch, I'm telling you. Like, hey man, if he knocks on my door, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna dislike Jehovah Witness. <laughs> I'm not gonna answer." Yeah. Well, uh, Jehovah Witnesses came to my door when I first moved here, mm-hmm. and. Uh, they wanted me to read their literature. Oh, man. I just It's all over my house, the propaganda, man. And, and I said, I'll make a deal with you. Mm-hmm. You read mine, and I'll read yours. <laughs> but we have to have a deal here that's honest. And, <laughs> and you say you're an honest person. You have to give me your word that you will read these newspapers mm-hmm. no didn't want to <laughs> then I said well here's yours back <laughs> and they haven't been back since I should do that they crossed me off their list uh, what's I their role that, I thought that was a fair deal yeah that is a pretty fair deal I've read their material before anyway so but you know what they do? They come there like nobody in the house, in my house, follows it. But um, yet like I, I guess they feel like that they don't want to be rude. Yeah. I just, I'll tell them, hey, I don't believe. I don't believe. Yeah. But I don't know. I guess because everybody else, you know, they're religious in here. I guess they feel like they don't want to. Go to hell. Well, it, it, you know, the the minute you you confront something, mm-hmm. you're part of the 
discussion there. And some people just haven't got the will to take that responsibility. So instead, this yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Uh, she had to throw this in the garbage. <laughs> I'll actually, you no, know, I'll discuss. I'll be like, it's just so funny when you talk to them. Like you, you, you'll say things about the religion, try to give some insight, but they always go back to this verse. Well, in this verse it says this. It's in the book. They're stuck like in, it's in the book in a little <laughs> cave. This in uh, the book. Oh man. Yeah, computer <laughs> produced a book and told you how to adore it. Now, you have a choice. Yeah. You can spend your life learning, or you can spend your life following. Your choice. Yeah. Go make it. Yeah. Read the book, or read your own book. Your yeah. book of life. Yeah, the never-ending story. But um, and these this book it was created uh the Bible was created and, um to uh, confuse yeah it was created to confuse but it was created by like in the school of Alexandria right it was well the uh, the one we're basically familiar with I guess is uh, a product of a group called the Essenes mm-hmm. who. Uh, accumulated uh, stories and assembled them into, what, 66 books or something. Mm-hmm. Handed it over uh, to a system who would carry the thing through. And that system uses the uh, singular person, Jesus, Mm-hmm. as its leader. The person who handed it over, of course, was John the Baptist. And yeah, he's really important. I, I was, Well, it's it's linked to a toilet. Yeah, John he's the Baptist. John, <laughs> and he, he puts you in water. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you're the shit. You're the shit that uh, they yeah. use to... <laughs> you see, what what is hard for most people to grasp here, Jared, is is to us, shit is uh, something we want to get rid of Mm -hmm. as soon as possible. But to the Neanderthaler, shit is the most valuable thing you produce. (laughs) It is a, a miniature way of keeping an entire person in storage until you need it. The Egyptians kept the whole body. That's why they mummified. Kept the whole body. Uh, Whereas the the scientist said, why keep the whole body when all you need is the fossilized excrement in storage? And eventually, the scientist said, well, you don't need to keep uh, what the person ate. You only need to keep who the person is. So they they kind of cleanse that whole material down to just DNA. And, uh, that's a lot easier to handle than than the entire thing, especially if you get your hands on stem cells, because stem cells will reproduce themselves, and therefore you never run out. Whereas if the cells are just other cells and you use it, then they're gone. Now, um... So Noah's Ark is just basically the symbol symbolism for a place where all the DNA is kept. You know, the other day, I 
I had a dream, Glenn, and you were in it. Again, this this dream was weird, man. It was just you were in there, and I, I think I was on your property or something, but and, and I remember just being a big boat, like Noah's Ark there, and yeah. you had like some animal going on a boat, and I was on the grass, and I was, and I seen a big book, and the kid was coloring inside it or something, and and I was like, hey, Glenn, I was like, this is this where you get like information from? And you looked at me, and you were just, and I was I was making a joke, and and you you just didn't say anything. You were just serious, and it was weird, man. <laughs> well, here we already are on a boat. <laughs> we don't realize it, but the system does. They call this place mm-hmm. Campville. But they didn't call it a town. They didn't call it a village. They didn't call it a city. They called it a township. Right. Ship. <laughs> mm. Why? You know right. one thing for certain. If you're on a ship, the captain is in charge. He doesn't need anybody else's approval. He's the judge and jury. So that's the way this whole area is run. Nobody in the federal government or provincial government is entitled to give orders to the captain of this ship. They just haven't figured that out yet, I guess. Yeah, another thing, Glenn, I want to find out, man. I, I have to find out. Like, I need to know for myself, like, how old my DNA is. Because I'm, I'm really trying to find out, like, what my role is. and. Well, why I don't am. you you go to the beginning and and say everybody's DNA is the same age. It begins as a single cell and divides, and you can take it back to the flatworm Mm -hmm. if you want to, and say that's how old the DNA is. Yeah, yeah. What you're looking for is how old is your DNA as a walking, talking person, and and that would mean as Homo erectus, Homo australopithecus, or whatever they call it, (laughs) coming from Australia. Well, uh, they call it Australia, but at the time, Australia and Antarctica were the same place. It it only got divided later on. Uh, Or are they talking about... uh, um, when the first human beings, Homo habilis, walked the surface of the earth, and then you would be talking about 115,000 B.C., approximately. If if, uh, there's any reason to believe what we're told by scientists, it may not be true because we may not find out the truth until uh, some later point in time. But if we go by what is is a accepted scientific knowledge is that a clan mother type person was born. And from that hermaphrodite was born every other human being, mitochondrial DNA, goes back to a single person. If one believes Dr. Wilson's experiments with supercomputers and stuff like that, Mm -hmm. so... At this stage of the game, uh, 
115,000 years old is the oldest that one could be. At 80,000 years B.C. was the time of the division of the clan mother into two genders. That was done with the assistance of a group of people we call Neanderthalers, cave bear. When did they divide from the clan mothers? It had to be at some time between 115,000 B.C. and 80,000 B.C. Where were they and what happened to them that created these divisions within their society that led them to um, idiot Safa? and from that position to downloading into a computer. The computer's name, for all intents and purposes in Africa, was Medusa. And of course, the the, um, symbolism of wisdom is the snake. And in the imagery of Medusa is a whole bunch of snakes on one head. So there's a downloading effect going on. And Medusa is then replicated in science as the medulla within the cavity in the in-between brain in the the space between the spine and the human brain is the medusa and it's it's access to the brain through the pons into the thalamus and hypothalamus which is kind of a symbolic allegory for muses who basically direct and decide what this body is going to do. And and it's basically the, the electrical and chemical system of the body that, that energize and allow the body to function. So you could be... Um, 115,000 years old, somewhere after that down to 80,000 years old, somewhere after that down to 40,000 years old when a completely artificial person is manufactured from excrement rather than from eggs, and that's uh, Cro-Magnon. And then you have the period of Cro-Magnon from 40,000 to 24,000 B.C., moving back out of Africa towards Antarctica and then going underground for 16,000 years. So that's from 24,000 B.C. down to 8,000 B.C., then you have the preparation on the surface by the product of Cro-Magnon, which is Roma, after the Ice Age. And, and then they establish races on the planet, brown, followed by yellow, followed by white. I prefer to call it pink, more pinkish than white, although there are some albinos, and and they are more like exceptions to the rule. Now, what's what's up with the albinos? Well, it's, it's just basically taking 
the black person to an extreme. Yeah. Uh, black is is all color combined. Mm-hmm. Albino is no color. <laughs> They're like a black white person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like a you've removed everything in the way of color. Yeah. Cuz when it's they more, it's more like transparent than than white. Because when they changed and made the white people, they changed everything. They changed the way the hair was. Yeah, well, they had to basically tell the difference. And the the basic difference was they were not going to uh, make them as they had made the kernels of corn, which are the Asians, all the same. Mm. They were going to make them different. Uh, and make them more like peas in a pod, uh, allowing uh, variations and allowing for a, a brain that thinks differently. Because they they had the book. They wrote the book on how do you live on Earth. Confucius presented the book. All the other religions present their version. You think the Neanderthals actually like wrote that book? Of course, their computer, not not the yeah. person. Computer, uh, the first one, Boaz, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. would be the one writing the book uh, on living on Earth. Follow our instructions is what it comes down to. You know, yeah. Love me. Adore me, that bullshit. But when it came time to write a book for what do we do next, when we leave the planet and go off into the universe, it's a little difficult for the troglodyte to write the book. Neanderthalers never lived that, doesn't have the experience, cannot compute. So he says, we have to have a group of people temporarily, mind you, who will take on this task of gathering up the information that we will use to write an equivalent book to how do you adore us on Earth, to how do you adore us when you're away out in the solar system someplace where we have less control over you than we have here. We can't affect your environment in the same way we can do it by creating a flood or a hurricane or a blind thrust or what have you, mm-hmm. tornado. So we need a different method for doing that. And you'll have to establish your own rules for slavery on our behalf. So... As they decided to manufacture this person, they also had to manufacture uh, the way that person would be eliminated once its purpose had been served. Uh, So by placing these people in the northern hemisphere on top of coal seams, in a place that could, in fact, be flushed. Now, you know, I talk about the flushing of Lake Superior, Mm -hmm. but that doesn't necessarily mean that's the only place that will flush in the Northern Hemisphere. I I certainly suggest that the Three Gorges Dam in China is being set up as an artificial way of creating a toilet in China Mm. and that uh, the Caspian Sea and uh, other seas in in Asia could serve the same purpose. So Mm. when the time comes, I know that there are three basic ways of getting rid of people. You have Water 
on the ground to flush, cleanse. You have coal underground through um, a, a spark probably created at CERN or Stanford or Fermi uh, that will light the fire and cause fire and brimstone. That means you're cutting off the avenue people have to run underground and hide if you're turning the underground into a nova or a, a, a sea of uh, quicksand. And uh, the third is rocks falling from the sky. And you can orchestrate that by redirecting comets, blowing up the moon, whatever. Yeah. And, and those three things take out the northern hemisphere, leaving a thousand years for the southern hemisphere to basically just double-check the figures. Brazil being the entry point, South Africa being the management team at uh, you know the the gang called the Beers. Yeah, I was wondering with Africa, like I didn't think they really had a important enough role because Neanderthals left that place. Yeah, they ago. they left it, and and somewhat like Canada, um, it it's designed to scare people off from going there. Here they use the fact that it's cold. <laughs> there they use the fact that there's always crime and famine and pestilence and disease and what have you. It's, it's basically when you want to keep something for yourself later, mm. you put out a story through the media that turns people off. When they didn't want people to go to Turkey, for example, they they put out this movie called uh, Midnight Express or something, mm -hmm. which was a train traveling through Turkey and the guy gets pulled off and taken off to jail and uh, accused of drug peddling, that kind of stuff, but in fact abused. And anybody who watched that movie would say, yeah, if I'm going to go on holidays someplace, Turkey would be the last place I'd <laughs> go. That's so, where I, hear, I see like these movies of how they talk about like like this one movie tried to scare people from going on the ground like it was a, a bad place to go and you'll, you'll get attacked by some monster. Or... Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, it's the role of the media is to build mental images. Yeah. Of course, the, the best media they have is called Hollywood. Hollywood. When I watch the Hollywood, like, I, I, like when I watch a movie, I, I watch, I look at all types of detail. You Like, you got to look at the role of uh, the women, too. Yeah. In these movies, like, they'll do certain things, like, one movie I watched, they had this prostitute, and they tried to almost make her look like a victim, mm -hmm. but, and then, like, make her look like she cared about people. And, like, to me, they was just trying to, like, make a wee man look like she was, not a wee man or something. Yeah. Well, you got to remember, the first wee men they made were prostitutes. Mm -hmm. That a prostitute is is the one that comes right out and tells you who she is. Mm -hmm. I can appreciate that, man. Yeah, I'll ha I'll take money for sex. That's what a prostitute is. Yeah. And from then on. Then they had the double O seven prostitutes who. Yeah. From then on, the cover-up begins. Yeah. How do I be a prostitute but not make it appear as if I'm a prostitute? And Marriage. The, the first, well, before then, the first step is uh, harem. Mm. Vestal virgins. So uh, 
I can be a prostitute to uh, to the priest by claiming he's representing God, so I'm just in fact marrying God. So nuns, vestal virgins, uh, are just prostitutes of a hypocritic uh, system where the hypocrites uh, do it. And then when you need to do it in the general society in a democratic world, Mm -hmm. marriage. So in 1215, under the cover of the Magna Carta, Mm -hmm. Magna Charta in those days, it had an H, they created marriage for for everybody, and it's all linked to uh, Mary, 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 yeah. and uh, that is suggestive of virgin birth. Yeah, with these uh, leaders, female leaders in the past, or not just female leaders, like just all types of leaders, I noticed, okay, they were all engineered, they were all with you know, made to have that medulla uh, in the neck, yeah. piggy in the neck, but then they did it on the mass scale. Yeah, well, recently. Plus, they they had to improve it. You know, uh, hatchet put uh, in in Egypt mm-hmm. was a hundred years before Nefertiti, mm-hmm. and and she wasn't exactly uh, a good looking chick. She was about as as uh, ugly as you can get, and wore a false <laughs> beard. Uh, you know, uh, even uh, worse than Margaret Thatcher, <laughs> Golda Meir. Oh man, I'm about to, <laughs> Golda Meir. I was watching a speech yeah. she made. She's like, "We have to stand up." It was literally like looking at a man with a wig on, yeah. trying to. That, that so, actually, so that's that's. <laughs> what their problem was at the beginning, you know. How, but now you see them now. A lot of them, you know, not the the leaders. Yeah. Say the truth, like leaders, like I really can't find, like Chelsea Clinton or Hillary Clinton or, the, I, they don't look attractive to me, man. I, no, I, they're not there. That group is telling you uh-huh. that they're they're not where they want to be yet. But they are women, though. Want to be is 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 somebody who has to be brought in from the outside into the ranks, and and therefore, what you have to start looking at more closely mm-hmm. uh, at is the other wives of leaders, because in uh, in Argentina mm-hmm. they got a good looking. Yeah, my she was. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and you have the Sarah Palin in waiting in Alaska for uh, her chance to be the president of the Cap Continent. Now that that type of of um, uh, when you met, that's different from like a woman that I, I would meet like on a, every day. Yeah. They, they how how do you think that they were different? Like they well they are masculine in in their day-to-day activities she talks about you know going uh, uh snowmobiling and and bear hunting and whatever <laughs> uh, shooting her rifle that that kind of stuff so they've got the masculine part in there uh-huh. but they they've done a better job on the porcelain or veneer aspects of the outside, making the the package look better. You know, I, you know what, Glenn? I, I always had a doubt every time I heard a girl, like in high school, or girls that I've met before. They say, "Oh, I wish." Like, I'm a guy. I hate other girls. They, they say, "Oh, I hate other women." Or, I, I I wish I had a penis. You know how many times I hear that? Well, for a, a woman, <laughs> that would be normal at this time in evolution. Mm-hmm. They wouldn't have talked like that in Africa mm-hmm. in uh, in the period in time of uh, 60,000 B.C. Everybody would have said, I wish I was a woman. I'm sure every man that was born out of a hermaphrodite mm-hmm. 
uh, who had to go and and do the physical work every day came home at <laughs> night saying, boy, I wish I was a woman. The yeah. clan mother gets to hang around the fire and, and, and give instructions to people. Mm-hmm. You know, so that that's just a normal evolutionary path that, you know, the the priests changed the rules of the game around and they deprived women of who they were. And now these women would rather be men. But there are a lot of men out there who would rather be women because they, they look at their mothers and, and say, geez, uh, somebody goes out and brings home the bacon <laughs> when she gets to stay home and watch... Uh, Guiding light on TV. <laughs> uh, and, and she knows the story by heart. You know, uh, that seems to me to make more sense. Mind you, uh, it has to be a certain economic status where somebody else is being hired to do the work. You know, and the maid comes in to do the cleaning and that kind of stuff. And, and when the husband comes home, he's told, you know, the cook prepared your meal there. Uh, have your dinner and then join me so we can watch Oprah. You know? <laughs> so uh, a an effeminate male born in that environment will say, hey, I'd rather be a woman. And, and today, of course, people don't realize, most people don't realize that there are three genders out there outside of the gay, lesbian, and cross-gender types. Mm-hmm. There are women, there are we men, mm-hmm. and there are men. And kind of hard to tell the difference sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In any event, being Christmas Eve, <laughs> goats don't care. <laughs> And they'll be expecting breakfast in the morning, and I provide room service. Uh, um, so I got to prepare for tomorrow and get to bed. Oh, yeah, in that, um, um, in that stable, you're going to have uh, this uh, look out for the, uh, the, the North Star. You, you might have some wise men come tomorrow. I had put a birth. sign at the door, room for rent. <laughs> I thought maybe a, a new Jesus would come <laughs> and, and uh, uh, instead of asking just for the right to be there without charge, maybe he'd pay rent. In any event, he didn't come, so goats uh, occupy the spaces along with the sheep, mm-hmm. and uh, I, I have to feed them twice a day and deliver water in between. And in the winter time that is isn't much fun. Water freezes every day. So you gotta pick up the buckets as ice, melt them down, refill them with water and re deliver that. So that's that's a task. You've been doing it by yourself, you don't have anybody helping you? So far. Yeah. Mm. But uh Scotty has offered to help, and and he should be here in the coming year. Maybe starting in 2010, I'll have help. Oh, I I plan to be there in this coming year, and um, we got a lot to talk about when I get there. (laughs) You're welcome anytime, George. Anyways, bedtime. Okay. Okay. Good night.